Kraft taking over Cadbury. Should investors now sell their shares? My next guest says there's good reason to hold on to them. The deal positions Kraft for future growth. Alexia Howard, food expert and analyst at Sanford C. Bernstein. Alexia, good to have you with us. Um, so the takeover of Cadbury, finally we draw a line finally. under this. Irene Rosenfeld gets what she's been after. Mm -hmm. Is this really going to help Kraft shareholders? I think from a strategic standpoint, it gets them into faster growing markets. The combination of Kraft and Cadbury will have 25% of share in developing markets, much higher than the rest of the peer group. Confectionery is a great category. They'll get great cost synergies with the cookies and crackers business that Kraft is already strong in. So I think from a financial and a strategic perspective, it looks, looks, it looks good. She's got the timing right as well because financing is fairly cheap right now and she got it at a pretty good price. Well, I was going to ask you about the financing. I mean, how are they going to pay for all this? Well, a lot of it's going to be debt financed uh, to raise the, the cash that needs to go to the Cadbury shareholders. They're also going to issue some, st uh, issue some stock, which we, uh, we've known about from some time. But they did recently dispose of the frozen pizza business, which I think raised some eyebrows because that's been a pretty good business for Kraft for the last couple of years. Because there was some talk that maybe they were going to do something with beverages, right? That that was going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there was a number of things that they could have thought about. I think in reality, Nestle came in with a, a, a bid for the frozen pizza business. It's obviously a good fit for, for Nestle because um, Nestle has a lot more frozen business than Kraft does. So given the opportunity and the opportunity to increase the cash component and get the Cadbury deal done... Um, uh, yes, it's probably somewhat dilutive, but uh, it certainly got them a, a, a good um, portfolio and confectionery in return. Does this uh, set back Rosenfeld's uh, goal to expand margins at all? Do we just push this out a little bit? I or is think it still she's going to be kept on the hook. I mean, yeah. both Cadbury and Kraft said, we're going to get to mid-teen margins by 2011. And Kraft actually only said that a few weeks before they actually put the bid in for Cadbury. So um, both are on a good trajectory right now. They're both getting decent productivity improvements. I think we'll probably see that um, uh, that goal of mid-teen margins by next year hold, which actually means that even though 2010 is going to be a bit rocky with a lot of uh, puts and takes, by the time we get into 2011, um, the uh, the earnings power of the company should be very strong. All right, now I'm going to switch from Kraft. I know you've got an outperform rating there. Yes. Tell me about what's going on at McCormick, MKC. Now, this is a new company for you. Yes. You've got an outperform rating there as well. This is spices and seasonings. Is there really growth in this business? Business? The uh, consumer takeaway data is uh, has really accelerated for spices and seasonings relative to other packaged food ca categories in the last six months. And I think what's happening here is that we're all remembering how to cook at home, maybe getting a little bit more experimental with the types of spices and dishes that we're preparing. And the whole category has really taken off strongly. And then you overlay that with the fact that they bought the Lowry's seasoning business a little that, over right. a year ago. And that has also been taken into new categories like marinades. And that's also doing very well. So sales growth for McCormick right now is the best in the peer group in consumer consumer measured channels. And the comps are pretty good too, right? Absolutely, yes. They're looking looking easier. Last quarter, I think investors were disappointed because they didn't report volume growth. Um, but I think a lot of that was because they were ramping up in some dollar stores the year before, so it created a tough comparable. This quarter, that's all behind us, so I would expect to see much stronger volume growth this time around. All right, and so what, a $44 price target right. on the shares of MKC? Yep. That's it. Anything surprising that we should worry about in terms of the report? Uh, keep an eye out for the guidance tomorrow and see how that looks versus consensus. All right. We're going to call you if anything goes wrong. All right. Thank you very much. Alexia Howard coming to us from Sanford C. Bernstein, expert in the world of packaged food.